Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to explore how we can load test our API. Okay, that is for example, suppose our team has developed one particular API using Amazon API Gateway and before the production deployment, we want to test it out by artificially generating traffic that whether the API and the backend system can work properly or handle the production level traffic or not. For example, 20 users per second concurrently hitting our API using get request or post request. Then how our API and backend will perform? That if you want to do before production deployment, that time this particular tool can be helpful for you. And this is the official website of artillery.io, never fail to scale. So using this, this particular system is trying to tell you that first you test your API before production deployment so that when traffic will increase, then your backend should able to support the traffic and it should scale automatically. So based on this kind of production load testing by artificially generating the traffic using artillery and etc. You can tune your backend system to tackle or handle the expected traffic. Right. So we are going to explore how to use artillery from scratch. So for that first what I will do, I will launch one EC2 machine and in that Ubuntu system, we will install artillery using this particular command. Okay. Right. So here I will go to instance and then here launch instance and here artillery cluster I can give the name. The machine I can choose Ubuntu machine and here free tier eligible one I can choose and then I can scroll below T2 micro let it be. The key pair name I can choose this one and keep all other properties default more or less and launch the instance. Okay. Here we need to wait couple of seconds. To make the instance in running state, initially it will be in pending state. So let's wait for a few seconds. So currently our instance is in running state. So let us try to enter in this particular issue to machine using put the. So I'll paste the host IP. I will choose the key pair file for authentication and I'll open this. And here login as Ubuntu. To avoid timeout issue, I will change the connection this particular setting to 10 seconds. And here we have successfully entered in this particular issue too. And now what I will do, I will execute some command to install artillery in it. So all these codes I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section so that you can also do the setup parallelly. Okay. So here I will execute all these commands. So first we are installing node. And then we are executing npm version to see whether it is properly installed or not. And because it is giving output, that means it is installed properly. And now here we are going to install our artillery. And once it gets installed, we will execute artillery version to see whether it is properly installed or not. So here it is installed. So now I can execute artillery version. And here you can see it is giving the proper output that means it is successfully installed. You can even execute this kind of command just put some kind of text here and if you execute this command it will try to show you with some colorful shape like here dinosaur kind of shape is telling knowledge amplifier. So that means it is working and now we will start our testing. So for testing any API first we need an API right. So here I have already created one API. So this API I have created using Amazon API Gateway. But to start the artillery understanding, you can take any API which is available in Google for free. That also fine. Let me just show you the API and its backend. So here I will open AWS Management Console in a new tab. And then here I will go to API Gateway. So here you can see this is our API artillery test. And if I go inside that here, it is having one particular resource path called first demo. Within that, we are accepting get request. If you click on that, it is basically in the backend triggering Lambda function. So let's see what this Lambda code is doing. So I will open AWS Management Console in a new tab and I will go to Lambda. And this is our Lambda backend, basically very basic set. This is the Lambda name. And if you observe here, you will see that it is getting triggered by our API gateway. Okay. And here this is the Lambda code. Let me just zoom this particular code little bit. 
and here first what we are doing we are importing json and photo 3 we are, we are creating the dynamo db client using photo 3 and here we are fetching one particular record from dynamo db which is having id equal to 01 and we are returning that particular item so you can even check our dynamo db so if i go to dynamo db here I can click on tables and here we are having a table called customer and if I click on explore table item here you will be able to see that one customer is available with id01 the name is Satu and whole name is 2 right so whatever lambda will do whenever we will make a api get request it will trigger the lambda the lambda will fetch the record which is having id equal to 01 from the dynamo db table which is having the net customer and it will return the item right very simple API even if you want you can test it out so this is our main URL and along with that this is our resource path so I will just copy this particular main URL in Google and then I will give a slash and I am basically executing my resource path that is first demo and I will hit an enter okay so when I am executing here you can see it is returning status code 200 in the body part it has basically fetched the dynamo data and it is returning as simple as that okay right now suppose we need to understand that whether this particular api will able to handle the production traffic or not so for that what i will do we will artificially generate get request which will be matching our production throughput for example we got the business requirement that per second two concurrent users may be executing get request to this api and that we need to test it out so for that if we want to use artillery we have to write one yaml file and that file will look like this what it is doing Suppose the file name is firstdemo.yaml. As part of config, in the target, you have to configure your actual API endpoint. So let me try to edit this particular config file parallelly. This one you can consider as template, and here I am editing. Okay. So first, as I told you, the, in the target section, you have to put your actual API endpoint. So API endpoint is this one. Point to be noted here, I am not putting the resource path which is first demo because we can put that separately somewhere else. I will tell that no worries. Then here we are keeping another field called phase. So phase is nothing but section of our API load testing. For example, in a production level system, it is not like always the traffic will be constant or fixed. Sometime it will go up, sometime it will go down. So that if you want to artificially generate using artillery, you can use the phase. So because it is the first YAML file we are creating, so I have kept a very simple phase. In this phase, I have configured only two things. One is duration, one is arrival rate. What is arrival rate 2 means? Arrival rate 2 is basically saying that two concurrent users will be coming per second and it will be requesting this particular API. Okay. The duration is 5 seconds. That means using these two combinations, we can say that for 5 seconds and that each second two users will be making get requests to our API. This way we want to artificially load test. Okay. So total how many requests will be making? 5 second total and 2 users per second that means total 10 requests will be making in 5 second to our this particular API okay and now coming to scenario so in scenario what we have to configure that this particular API may accept get request post request if it is accepting post request then what is the JSON payload we should send all this information we have to configure in the scenario section okay so here if you see we have kept only one scenario that is get request we are making to this particular endpoint so our endpoint here we need to provide the resource path so our resource path is first demo i will just put that here okay so this become our first artillery yaml file what it is saying that our base url is this one our resource path is this one here i need to make get request two users per second like that way for five second i need to test that is total 10 requests i'll be making okay so now let's create this yaml file i will just do vi and then first demo.yaml i will go to insert mode and then here i will paste my code okay it is done i will just do colon wt and our code is ready now to run this particular artillery test we have to execute this code debug equal to http star this will make sure all the request and response whatever our artillery is sending to this api in the backend all the logs it will be printing in the console okay and then this is our main code artillery run and then here our yaml file name so our yaml file name is basically firstdemo.yaml so 
we have given this particular name here with complete one, right? So we are ready to test it out. But before that, let me open some CloudWatch logs so that we can inspect that artillery is really making the request, okay? So for that, what I have done for this particular API, I have enabled CloudWatch monitoring. So here I will go to dashboard section and here you'll be getting a matrix called API calls. I will open this in CloudWatch to view. And here local time zone it is selected. I am only interested in past uh, 15 minutes data. So here you can see in past 15 minutes count is nothing. That means the API we have not hit for past 15 minutes. Okay. And another matrix I will open that is whenever our artillery code will hit API, API gateway will trigger lambda. The lambda will basically scan our DynamoDB table, right? So that particular read request, how many it is coming in the DynamoDB table, that also we will try to inspect using CloudWatch, okay? So here I will go to explore table item and here we will be having a monitor section. Here CloudWatch matrix it is showing. The first matrix is read usage. So I will open this in CloudWatch. Two matrix I will be keeping side by side. And here also I am only interested in past 15 minute data. Here you can see there is no such DynamoDB read request here. I can only check this particular consumed one and maybe past uh, I can configure 15 minutes here if you see on 13 13 I made a test so like that way it is graph coming but currently it is 121 pm and near to that there is no such request as of now okay right so both metrics are open now we are ready to test our code so here to run the code I will just execute this command in the console So here it will print lot of thing. Let's wait for the code to finish and then I'll explain. So here it is done. Once you get the summary report, that means you can understand your load test is finished. So let's scroll up and try to understand from the beginning. So here we have executed our code. In the artillery code, we have mentioned that it need to make get request to this particular endpoint, right? So that's what here if you observe it is doing request start some request it is making to this particular URL. Okay. So here if you observe this is the complete URL where it is making the request. This is our actual API endpoint. This is our stage name and this is our resource path. Right. So this particular part up to artillery test from HTTPS we have configured in the target section. Basically this one. And then in the get URL whatever we have configured that it appended in the end part and then it made a request right like how generally it works and then you can see method type is get and here whatever response it achieved that also it has printed so here the response is nothing but from DynamoDB table for the id01 whatever we were getting from directly hitting the api from google chrome that same response we are getting here with status code 200 like that way each time we are getting the same response because the lambda code is fixed it is not dynamically querying anything so for that here all this response and request will be almost same okay now let's go to the summary section here if you see in the beginning here it has written all views finished so what is view view is nothing but virtual user okay so artillery in the back end is creating these users artificially as if the users are making request right so they are called virtual user and total time it took seven seconds here if you observe our code we ran for five seconds Maybe due to network traffic or for some reason, it took two more seconds extra and the total time it is displaying seven seconds. But ideally you can consider whatever total phase time we can configure in YAML, that should be ideally equal to the total execution time. Okay. Now here let's try to understand some important components from here. Number one is HTTP request. How many requests do we make to that API that it is showing? So as I told you, for 5 seconds and at each second 2 user that means total 10 requests we are making. So here you can see HTTP request 10. Okay. And then HTTP request rate. What is HTTP request rate? It is nothing but at what rate it is making a request. So ideally the request rate is 2 per second. But for some reason it is showing 3 per second. Maybe network traffic or some issue. It just increased little bit. So that is not a problem. But you can understand HTTP request rate. We can easily calculate using the phase part here because per second two requests we are making so ideally it should be two but for some reason it can three almost same let's consider that much error and then here http response 
So here we got response for all 10 data points and for all of them we got response code 200 that you can see from here okay http.o.210 so 200 request means that is correct data and for all 10 requests we are getting same response code 200 that means our api is successfully able to survive this load test okay and then another important part is this response timing very important because it shows the statistics about our response like for example minimum time it took to send the response maximum time we may be sometime more interested in the mean value okay what is the average time the api is taking to send the response and here you can see it is taking only 379 milliseconds which is very fast right so these are some important components number one is all view finished i hope you understood what is the meaning of view total time we can easily compute from the face section and then http dot codes then dot status code for example you are getting 200 status code then here 200 will be coming suppose along with 200 you are getting some other status code that will come as new row and it will basically show you number of codes received for that particular status code okay then the request rate it is self explanatory that is rate in which the http requests are done then http request that is total number of requests done and then http response okay these are some important summary components which we should have a clear idea while working with artillery test and now we can inspect the cloudwatch matrix also to view whether artillery really make any request or not so earlier we have seen in our api gateway count section we have got no data but now if i refresh here you can see that because we have tested recently that's why there is a increase in the count request okay and if i scroll my mouse pointer here you can see that at 120 pm it increased to 10 and currently it is 127 pm nearly 5 6 minutes ago only we did that testing so that means it is capturing that also and this particular graph is proving artillery really made the request even we can check the dynamo db also earlier nearly at 11 20 or something we observed no data point or no spike now if i refresh here you will able to see that nearly at 1:20 pm there is a spike in this graph okay that is basically indicating that artillery has made a get request to api api has triggered lambda lambda went to dynamodb for scanning and as a result dynamodb read request we are observing a good spike right nearly at the same time when we done test so this way we can perform load testing for our api so i hope the primary concept is clear to you now let's go to little advanced and that is our second demo.yaml second yaml file basically we are going to create and here the first part it is same in the second part in the face section i made some twist and what is that in the first demo we made a constant or fixed request rate that is two users per second like that for five seconds we are testing as i told you in production system the request rate fluctuates with time so let's try to artificially generate that fluctuation so here first what we are doing for the duration of two minutes we are keeping arrival rate one that is for the first two minutes each second one user will be coming then for the next two minutes i am artificially sending no request okay that is nothing i am simply making a pause for two minutes okay no request will be made for this two minute window and then for the next two minutes i am doing a stress testing i increased the traffic by a very high amount that is three concurrent user per second and this traffic will be sustained for two minutes and these are our three stages first one user per second like that two minutes then for the next two minutes no traffic then for the next two minutes three users per second and the rest part it is keeping unchanged that is flow we are keeping get request only to our first demo resource path okay right so here i will go to vi second demo.yaml and i will go to insert mode and then here i will paste my config i will do colon wq and it is done now earlier how we have ran we basically ran directly this particular command and all the request and response whatever we were getting it was printing in console now when we may be testing for our production system this is not the ideal way what we can do we can move all these logs to a particular log file and that we can use for later analytics purpose and it is also not a very good practice to directly run some long running code 
from putti directly because your putti might have some time out issue or you need to keep your putti window open for the long duration that is not a good practice right because it might happen that you are testing your port for 2 3 hours so to avoid such putti related problem we can run our code in the back end whether putti is open or not it will run and then once the code is executed it will stop that's it okay so for that we can take help of no hub command okay so to do that what i will do first i need to put this particular yaml file in some cell script so here the cell script name second demo.sh i can keep and here i can go to insert mode to the cell script and whatever code earlier i was executing from the console directly that i'll be putting in this cell script okay and then here i will give colon wq that is done now to execute this particular cell script i should be making sure i am giving 755 permission and then what we can do we can execute our no hub command what it will do it is basically calling our cell script and whatever logs it will be generating it will send to second demo dot out file both the logs and the output data right so this is what this mohab command will do whether we are keeping our putty open or not that does not matter okay so here i am going to execute this particular command so before that let me just uh, keep my win scp also open so that we can see the logs directly from the win scp so here host name I can put the username is Ubuntu and the password I'll be choosing authentication the PPK file I'll configure and I'll click on OK and then login. Okay. So here we are successfully able to enter in our PC to using WinSCP and if I refresh here you can see we are currently having three files. One is first demo.yaml which we have already executed, then the second demo.yaml for our second round of testing and this is the cell script. Okay. Till now this particular output file is not generated yet. Right. So here I will execute this mohab command. So I first clear everything and here mohab command I will execute. And here you can see our mohab command started. It has basically given the PID 30. To, I will just save this if I need for future tracking and in the backend what actually happened it started writing all the logs in this particular file. So let's see now currently that log file is still not there I will refresh and here you can see second demo dot out this particular file created okay. I can open this particular one and here it will start showing all the logs whatever artillery is making a request and whatever response it is getting all these things it started printing okay and in middle it will give some summary report also but this is not the absolute summary report only once the complete execution is done then it will give the final summary and these matrices are for a certain period only okay so this kind of thing you can see that currently it has made seven requests and set a score for all of them we got 200 like that way it is coming so here i can close this one that is not impacting much so what is our main point of interest is basically simulating variable traffic that is it is not a constant traffic right sometime it is one user per second and then it is getting increased to three users per second in the middle there is a two minute pause so ideally this is nothing but a production kind of scenario we are creating using programming so we will observe in our cloudwatch logs whether it is getting changed accordingly or not both the dynamodb read usage as well as our api hit. let this particular code run Let's wait for 5 minutes because here it will take 2 minutes and then here 2 minutes, 4 minutes and here 2 minutes. Total actually it will run for ideally 6 minutes. So let's wait for 6 minutes and once the code is done, we will observe the logs and all other things. Okay, pretty much 6 minutes is over. Now let's go to see the logs. Here all the summary report and all other request response got captured. I can open that one and if I scroll completely below, here we will be having our summary report. As usual here you can see all views finished that is all virtual users have executed that get request and total time it took 6 minutes. Why 6 minutes? Here if you see the total of phase is 6 minutes. 2 minutes plus 2 minutes plus 2 minutes. Okay. That is total 6 minutes. Right. The HTTP ports 200, 480. How 480 is coming? That is here 
one request per second like that two minutes so two minutes means total 120 request in 60 plus 60 seconds right and then here two minutes it is ideal and then here for two minutes it is making three requests per second right so i can open calculator and show you so here two minutes per second one users that is two multiplied by 60 here it is 120 user in two minutes and here plus in two minutes that is basically two multiplied by 60 seconds and per second three users so multiplied by three if i do here you will get 480 so that's why here if you observe the total 480 codes we are getting 480 requests are made and all requests got successful okay that is http status code 200 is coming 480 and the response time if you observe the mean value is 34 milliseconds right so that means it is pretty much fast so our api able to sustain this particular traffic also so now let's see whether this phase distribution we are able to observe in the cloudwatch matrix also or not so if i refresh this particular one here you will able to see the matrix got last updated at 135 so maybe instead of 5 minutes let me decrease to 10 seconds and we are getting this kind of graph what this graph is showing try to understand so initially we started our testing nearly at 1.33 pm and it executed some kind of traffic where the traffic was basically per second one user is coming and that payload we ran for 2 minutes so at 1.33 it got started it went up to 1.35 pm okay so in between that that particular load we made and then there was a 2 minute pause so here that we are getting no count and then again after 2 minutes that is at 1.37 pm here you can see the spike we are getting in the count section so this is how as per artillery yaml configuration we are observing the count graph in cloudwatch also let's inspect our dynamodb so here if i refresh our dynamodb here also you will able to see that same at nearly at 132 33 pm one spike started and then in the middle it got reduced because we were having a nothing time or sleep time kind of thing where no traffic or no request we were making and then again we are getting a very huge spike because in the second phase we increased number of concurrent users that is initially it was one and then we changed to three that's why here if you observe the first spike is having lesser height but the second spike is having higher height right so as per artillery yaml configuration automatically in the backend our cloudwatch matrices are also getting reflected and i hope you understood this how to configure variable traffic using artillery very easily just using yaml configuration we can achieve that and this particular load testing code you can run for couple of hours also for example one user per second this request you want to make for continuous two or three hours so all you need to do 3h that is basically indicating three hours like that way right and obviously if you are running the code for three hours keeping the putty open is not a good practice so better to opt for no hub command and try to encapsulate your main artillery code using cell script and then execute no hub command move all the logs in a specific file which we can inspect or analyze later for understanding different events and summary statistics whatever artillery generated right and the last case what we are going to observe as part of today's discussion is post request so first we understood simple get request with one single phase constant rate throughput then we explored variable length traffic and now it's time to test post request and mostly in post request we send some json payload along with the request we don't simply make request right so here we will see that maybe in a csv file all the request json parameters are stored how we can read that csv file and make a post request that we are going to explore in the case 3 okay so here for this particular discussion i have taken one particular url let me show you that particular url first so this is basically one website url and here what i will do i'll go to inspect section and here i'll go to network section maybe here suppose i am searching something maybe heart when i'm searching in the back end to generate this particular data it is making some post request and that you are getting in this search tab this is the request url and post request basically it is making and in the payload section it is passing some amount of payload related to medical code related stuffs okay and based on that it is getting this particular response what it is displaying in the front end cool 
So what we can do, we can maybe keep all this payload section in a CSV file and then we can configure our YAML file such that it will make post request to the endpoint by reading the CSV file data. Okay. So here this is the code for that. But first let me show you that particular CSV file to have a clear understanding. So here this is our CSV file where I have kept lot of data whatever is required to make this particular post request. So here this is our CSV file. If you see the column names dossier, DRF, DXHCC, search. These are the four things only we need right. We have seen. Let me just show you again. So what I will do. I will go to inspect section and then here maybe I will make some request and then if I go to network section here you can see we made a search request in the payload here it need dxhcc, dossier, drf and search only those four things we have kept in our csv file with some dummy data we have created this particular file which is having nearly 32,562 records okay if you exclude the first words here right so how we can configure the yaml so the first thing target, our target basically base URL is this one and then here in the face section we are again putting some fluctuation in the traffic for example initially for 2 minutes we are keeping arrival rate 2 users per second then for the next 1 minute I am doing nothing and then for the next 10 second I am making a stress testing and that time each second 32 users are coming ok so these are different phase of our testing in the payload section in the path so in path we can configure that from which csv file it will read the data for making the json post request so that path is basically this particular one within our ec2 we should be keeping our csv file and that our artillery code will read and make the request so here as of now this particular file is in my windows let me move that to ec2 so here i will just simply drag and drop i will reconnect And here it is uploaded in home Ubuntu section. This particular file is there. So that we have configured. Then order is sequence. So what I am trying to say. This particular CSV file you read sequentially. And each row you pick up. And use this data point for JSON request. Okay. So order is sequence. Then load all true. Skip header true. Because in my CSV file the first row is header. I don't want to make some post request with this particular data point. So skip header true, delimiter comma because this is comma separated file and then skip empty line also true. Then what are the fields we are having in our CSV file that you have to keep in proper order. That is dossier, DRF, DXHCC and such. Here if you see in that order only it is there. Dossier, DRF, DXHCC and such. Cool. So I hope up to this you understood how to read the CSV file and then in the scenario section it is same like earlier. We are giving some name for our scenario. And in the flow, we are making a post request, okay. In the URL within our post request, this is the resource path, that is slash API slash search. That's what we have seen, right. Here if you observe the header, this is the URL, where https colon slash slash www.hccreference.com, this is our base path. So that base path we have configured here, https colon slash slash www.hccreference.com. And then the resource path. That is basically nothing but slash api slash search that we need to configure in this section and apart from that for this post request we need to pass some header also and this is a very popular header generally what we use that is content type is application or json so that one we are configuring like this way and what json data i should be passing while making the post request so that you have to configure like this way dossier drf dxxc search and that it will pick up using this kind of variables okay so these are all variable values these values it will be taking from this csv file so like that way from csv file it will read the elements and for each row it will make a post request to this particular endpoint with the variable length traffic right so i hope this particular code you understood now let me quickly create this particular file also so vi third demo dot yaml and here i'll go to insert mode and here i will paste this particular code completely and then here I'll paste that. Sorry, it got pasted two times. I will just uh, right and quit. And first, I will. And then here I will do VI again. Sorry for this mistake. And then in insert mode, I'll go. I'll paste the code. Okay, only one time paste it. Then colon. 
W. Okay. So our YAML code is updated. Now here for running this YAML, I will create another cell script like how we did earlier. PI third demo dot sh and in this cell script, I will be putting my artillery code run. Okay. So this one I have configured and then I will write and quit. That is also done. We will basically give 755 permission to this particular cell script. That is also done. And now we are ready to run our no hub command. This time we are moving all the logs to third demo.output file. So let's see the status of our directory currently. Here third demo.sh, third demo.yaml is there, but third demo output file is not yet created because we have not ran the code yet, right? So here I will run this particular code and here it is started. And this is the process ID 3154. I will save this for future reference if it is needed. And because it is running using no hub, if you want, you can basically close this particular putty also not at all a problem. Okay. Even you can close the municipality also and just keeping open to show you the log file got created. If I refresh here, somewhere you will see third demo dot out. And you can open this one to check whether it is making a request or not. So here it is making the HTTP request and for that it is getting the response also. This is the response code like that. Okay, right. So that means our artillery code is started. Now again, this particular code will take ideally 2 minutes plus 1 minute plus 10 seconds. So that is total ideally 3 minute 10 second kind of value it will take. Let's wait for that much second. And then we will inspect the logs because here we have kept really very high traffic arrival rate 32 that is 32 concurrent users per second and that traffic we are running for 10 seconds so we might face some error code also not only our simple success code 200 but apart from that if we able to artificially create some error code that also will inspect in the summary section how it is coming up right so with that way we will have a good idea with artillery and again I am telling you this is just a basic tutorial this can show you the door but documentation is the one which can help you in walking through it and resolve all the issues so I will always suggest to go through the documentation also you will be able to learn much more in depth the documentation link I will be providing in the description box or in the comment section for your easy reference right so here if I just close this one, here you will continuously see this particular file is getting updated. So last it updated at 153, currently it is 155. So let's refresh and see this 155. Continuously our artillery code is running, making the request, response, all these things. It is capturing the size also continuously getting increased. But for some time you might observe some constant value because here for one minute duration we are doing nothing. And then for next 10 seconds we are doing some stress test. Right? And this is the way how we can run our long running API load testing codes. Just use MooHub so that you can close your putty and in the back end the process will be continuously running. The, whether the, in the back end the process is running or not that you can easily understand from your EC2 CloudWatch matrices also. So here this is the EC2 where artillery load testing code is running right. I can go to the monitor section and here you can see the CPU utilization continuously the CPU is getting utilized. That is basically nothing but an indicator that our code is running. And then for some time it might show some zero value because we have given some sleep time and then again it might take some spike. Okay. So here almost 3 minute 10 second is done. Now let's see our output file whether summary report got generated or not. It is downloading and let's scroll completely below and here we are getting our summary report. So here in the summary report, you can see that again, we got no error basically. All the 560 requests, we got successful code 200. And why it is 560 requests, that calculation also we can do. Here if you observe that this is our traffic, right? So let's calculate quickly how 560 value is coming. Two minutes. So for two minutes, that is basically two multiplied by 60 second. And each second, two users are coming. So multiplied by two, okay? That is 240. Then for one minute we are doing nothing. Then for next 10 second total 32 users we are sending per second. So 240 plus 32 multiplied by 10 it is 320. Right? If I just do 560. And that's what here it is showing. 560 requests we made. 6 requests per second. 
nearly and http request total 560 the mean value is two second value we are getting as average which if in your case if it is pretty high you might need to tune the back end and this is what the statistics we are getting let me do one thing what i will do i will enter in the put t and let me increase the traffic by more higher value just to show you some other course also coming up and the login as ubuntu we can make and then here our code what we have created is basically third demo.yaml so all i will do i will try to edit this particular file i'll go to insert mode and here for the 10 second duration instead of arrival rate 32 i will keep very high value maybe 50 request per second we are keeping okay and then here i will give colon wq and quit that and then again i will run my nohub command so here this is the nohub command i will run and here it is showing permission denied why permission denied because i think we have edited the file right uh, that's why we might be let's see uh, our demo dot output file this is the log let's open this log this is the earlier code only it is having so here uh, no have sl script output okay okay like i got the point so the reason is we should do sudo su because we have installed artillery within sudo su so here let's just do ls or ls lrt i can do uh, just to double confirm whether the file got updated or not i can just execute this one and here you can see that 50 users we are sending per second so the code looks good now i can run this particular code with high traffic okay and again the logs i am printing to third demo dot out or maybe here i can keep fourth demo fourth demo dot output file and here our process started 3576 is our process id and if i go to win sap here fourth demo dot output file also got created okay and now this time we kept very high traffic so we should expect some other ports apart from response code 200 okay so here again you can see that from beginning the traffic is started let's wait for three minutes so nearly at 2 4 pm ideally it should be completed let's wait for that much time so almost it is 2 pm four minutes now we should able to see the summary report because the test ideally should take only three minutes 10 seconds because here if you observe here Two minute and then here one minute and then here 10 so total three minute 10 seconds so let's just open the logs scroll below and here you can see the total time taken is three minute 20 seconds almost very close only we were expecting three minute 10 seconds it is 20 seconds that is fine and now this time point to note that not only we got some success but here we got some time out also and for 375 post request we got time out and for the rest 375 we got response code 200 okay so here if you observe the total request were made 740 how 740 is coming again we can do a simple mathematics so here i can clear everything and then here two minutes so two multiplied by 60 is second and each second two users are coming so multiplied by two and that is 240 plus here there is no traffic we are making and then here for 10 second and each second we basically made 50 users so 50 multiplied by 10 that is 500 okay that is total 740 and that's what it is showing here 740 right but point to note error code also it is displaying so by default artillery expect the response within 10 seconds if the request is waiting more than 10 seconds then automatically it will make a timeout if i just scroll up somewhere i can show the timeout issue here you can see that request error timeout awaiting request for 10,000 milliseconds. That is after 10 seconds, artillery will think the backend is not going to respond and it will throw a timeout issue. You can tune that and if in your case the business team is not comfortable for 10 seconds await time, then you have to improve your backend system 
like those kind of further analysis you can do. The mean value or average response time is 1 second 942 milliseconds something like that right and this is all the statistics we are getting. So this way we can easily generate post request for variable traffic by reading the CSV file and each time we can send different different request in the post endpoint and that way artillery can help us in load testing. I hope you understood this. This is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful then please like share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.